hello again. So let's carry on and let's meet another group of microfossils. This one time, ones which were united by using uh, phos phosphate or phosphatic materials for their hard parts. I say we're going to meet small groups, but we're actually, for the, our purposes here, only really going to meet one group. That is the Cononauts. These were weird creatures, as we we're about to see, um, which are known primarily from their uh, from their mouth parts, from basically their, their teeth-like materials that are around from either the latest Precambrian or early in the Cambrian through to the Triassic period. Um, the things that I'm not mentioning but may be useful as microfossils are fish and shark teeth, which are useful in and present in rocks from the Cambrian through to today, and some wormy boys, things called scolicodonts. These are types of annelids that were also around from the Cambrian to recent, but I won't be talking about those um, in this set of slides today. So let's do what we set out to do and let's meet the conodonts. So conodonts are the remnants of um, a whole animal and conodonts themselves are actually phosphatic tooth-like microfossils. They're made of calcium carbonate fluoroapatite. So these are the same bits that many vertebrates make their hard parts out of. They're found in individual bits called elements that are commonly 0.25 to two millimeters in length. And you can see some examples of elements on this slide here. Here are some revealed through CT scanning, probably in something close to their life position. Here in the middle is what they typically look like in a rock. This one, these ones are resolved with the use of a scanning electron microscope and they're a bit smashed up and flattened. And this is a 3D reconstruction of how these um, elements may have interacted with each other um, in life. So conodonts uh, range from probable Precambrian members, as I've just mentioned, through to the Triassic, and they're quite common in, and useful, in particular, in Cambrian deposits. They have indeed become the premier microfossils for dating Paleozoic shallow marine rocks, especially carbonates. They've been widely used, as a result, uh, in both paleoecological and biogeographical studies in the Paleozoic. That's in large part because other microfossils are relatively rare in rocks of this age, especially as we go down towards the Cambrian. In terms of preparation, um, normally uh, rocks with conodonts in are prepared using acids such as acetic, formic or monochloric acid to release the elements from their host rocks, but that depends exactly on what the host rock is. Um, to observe them, clean specimens can be viewed using just a normal reflected light microscope and manipulated and mounted on slides, or they can be observed in thin sections or under uh, the SEM, the scanning electron microscope. But what actually were there, were these things? Well, it's thought that these um, elements were actually parts of the feeding apparatus of an extinct vertebrate called the conodontophorid. Um, so that means that these are animals. So they're right up here on our tree that we've been using to place a lot of the other microfossils. And that means that because they're animals, we can look at them on our animal tree that we've met in our other lectures. And if they are um, uh, an extinct group of vertebrates, we can say that they are on the chordates within our animal tree of life. Exactly where they fall on that tree relative to other vertebrates is a matter of current debate. We think that these animals, you can see one reconstructed on the bottom of left here, but bear in mind there are some quite large error bars in that reconstruction, were soft bodied, hence the mouth elements, the teeth are typically the only bits that preserve. They were, we think, bilaterally symmetrical, so they're bilaterian animals. And we think they were either nectonic or benthic, they either swam or they lived on the seafloor. They, they um, increased in diversity during the Ordovician and then again during the Devonian. Uh, but those increases in diversity are, are balanced by decreases in diversity in the Silurian and the late Carboniferous through to the Permian, with then a slight rebound early in the Triassic. Uh, they are typically found in marine uh, near shore deposits. So they're, they're commonly found in, for example, black shales, and they're associated with things such as graptolites, radiolarians, brachiopods, and fish remains. 
So that is what they are and where they're found. Let's have a look at them in a tiny bit more detail. So bear in mind, I don't expect you to remember this. If you ever need to, to look at um, conodonts, you can look all of this up. But just in the, the most simple terms, they, there are a number of different types of, um, of uh, elements that we associate with conodonts. Simple cones are formed by a single tooth or denticle, such as that shown on the top left here. And the first, the earliest conodonts were of primarily this type. Then later, as this group evolves, we see the appearance of a series of different types of elements. We have the blade type that's shown here. These were elongate, laterally compressed units formed by a row of denticles, which are fused except at their tips. So kind of like a long toothy type thing. There are bar type, such as that shown here, which are thin bars with or without a bent shaft, which is commonly branched. And there are platform types shown on the bottom left here. And it's thought these evolved from bar and blade type conodonts um, by the development of broad flanges into plates. So basically they're a modification of some of the other forms. These are, however, just really broad categories. And as you can see on the right hand side here, actually there are subdivisions of each of these different types of element. And if you want to see a full treatment to try and better understand that, I recommend looking at this paper here by Mike P Mark Pennell and colleagues from the year 2000. I think it's a really good place to start. With that, I'm gonna leave you for this video and I'll be back with another group of microfossils very shortly. I'll see you there.